What's going on? Welcome to the inside of my shed. Um, I'm sure you've seen that wagon that I pull around in some of my videos that hauls all my gear. I've noticed that when I'm walking up on wildlife that sometimes they seem to notice me more when I have the wagon than I do without. Generally I dress in earth tones, but the wagon's like this big dark shadow coming up on them, this big dark object, and I think they notice that more than anything. So I've been getting to where I just leave the wagon a ways behind when I see something and walk up to it and then have to go back and get the wagon. Anyways, today I'm going to do some upgrades to this wagon, including give it a paint job to make it more earth tone looking, and I'm going to add some lights to it because I have a camping trip coming up where I will be walking in the dark with the wagon and the lights will help. So in a previous video, I changed the wheels out for some softer tires with the set of wheels from Harbor Freight. Um, the ones that come on it are real stiff and real hard. The wagon's originally meant to carry 400 pounds. I'm barely putting 100 pounds in it with the weight of my water and all my gear. So I'm trying to soften up the ride. If you're wanting to upgrade your wagon to haul other things, more weight, don't do the tire upgrade. I know some people use these wagons for camping or for hunting or whatever. So I'm doing it to make it ride smoother so my camera gear doesn't bounce around everywhere. So I'm going to get this thing set up and we're going to give it a coat of paint. Also, in case you missed it in the, that previous video, I did use the wheels from Harbor Freight. They're very easy to swap out. I'll sh I can show you right here. All right, so they just got this clip here. And if you lift the ring, like so, you can pull the pin out, and then the whole wheel will slide off. And then you can slide the new one on from Harbor Freight. And I'm running these without in, any air in them, just to have a softer ride. But if you're hauling weight, keep some air in them. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is pop the wheels off so I don't paint the tires. Alright, so I got all the wheels off. I'm going to tape up the axle just to keep from getting uh, spray paint on it. So next I'm just going to wipe it down and get all the dust and stuff off of it so the paint will stick. So my idea is to give it a camouflage paint job. I'm going to put down a coat of green and then I have oak trees in my yard. I can always find a tree branch that fell and I'm going to get the branch with some leaves and hold it up and go over that with some brown so that what you see is green leaves painted along the side of the cart. So that's the idea for my paint job. That'll work. Alright, so my idea is to just remove some of the leaves so that I have a pattern to work with. Maybe something like that. Alright, so there's the first coat of green. I'm going to let that dry and get started on the wheels. So I came into the garage to talk. They're drilling for water at the next property over and it's getting pretty loud and I can hear all the tractor sounds and I'm sure this microphone's picking them up and you can hear them too. So the way I did the wheels there is since I have no air in the tires, I could push the tire off the rim. Index cards would work better, but all I had was envelopes. So push the tire down, put the envelopes under the rim and then you could paint the rim without getting paint on the tire. That trick works with car tires too. When the paint dries, I'll pull the index cards off and the next step is we're gonna start painting leaves on it.
That looks like a wagon of crap. That did not come out how I had planned it. I'm gonna paint it green and try again. Those are the leaves from a white oak. I'm gonna try a live oak next. Three. Nope. All right, I think I found something that's gonna work. I'm gonna try this. I think that looks pretty damn good. Have a look. Probably should have changed uh, branches instead of letting the paint build up on it, but who cares? It's just paint and now it's camouflage. Even got the wheels. I'm gonna let that sit and dry for a few hours and then I'm gonna come back and start wiring up the lights. So here are the LED lights I'm gonna put on. I have two of these seven inch light bars. I'm gonna have one on the front and one on the rear. And I've got this 12 volt battery from like a kid's power wheels. It's rechargeable, uh, clearly. I'm gonna mount this in a plastic box on the back of the wagon and then wire up a little circuit for it and run it off a toggle switch. If you look here on the back of the wagon where I want to put the box that's going to hold the battery, the back of the wagon's got an angle to it, and if I just mount the box right to the back of the wagon, it's going to be angled in a way that the battery's going to want to fall out. So I cut this board at an angle, if you can see that, to act as a spacer to keep the box sitting level. I've already put a coat of paint on it, and I've already drilled the holes, so I'm just going to go mount it up and see how it looks. This is just mocked up for now. Everything's just hand tight. I'll actually tighten things down once I get the wagon flipped back over. Um, now I'm gonna start mounting the lights. I'm not entirely sure if I want two lights on the front or one in the front and one in the back. That way if I wanna look behind me, I can see what's back there. It will be dark. So the LED kit comes with a lock washer but it tries to fall into the bracket when you tighten down on it. I don't know why they didn't give you a flat washer to make up for that, but I'm gonna back it up with a flat washer and then once I tighten it down, everything's gonna get some thread lock so it doesn't just vibrate loose. So the wagon has this lip on the top, the rail into the wagon, and under it is, are these ribs, and I'm gonna drill through those little ribs and route my wires through there so that you don't see any wires. All right, it's another morning. I had some stuff I had to do and I decided to stop where I was last night. Um, I'm gonna finish up the wiring today and as I was getting set up, I noticed that the rims are getting scratched and I think I kind of figured out what it is and I think I best show you if you're gonna paint your rims. Uh, so let me show you what it looks like. So if you see, they're scratched all the way around right here and this back one is starting to get it too. So what I think is happening is I currently have the wagon upside down and what I think is happening is that this falls down and then it just rubs against the rim. Is the Once this falls down, the rim will try to slide out just a little bit and that'll make contact. I'm going to flip them over. It might happen again. I'll come up with a new solution if it does.
All right, I got the wiring all hooked up. I just ran a basic circuit with a toggle switch. I'll give you a demonstration now, and I'm also gonna give another demonstration tonight when it gets dark. I'm not 100% on the battery box. I like the idea, but I don't like the box, so I'm gonna see what else I can find and change that. So check this out. All right, I went to a few different stores and I found this food storage container. I think this will work much better than my current battery box. It hangs a little low, but it doesn't hang lower than the bottom of the wagon. I'm gonna get it painted up. Hopefully paint sticks to it. May have to rough it up a bit. Also because it seals from the top, I don't have to use my block of wood spacer. I can just mount it at an angle and it'll work perfect. All right, I got the battery box painted and mounted up to the wagon. I'm gonna show you what that looks like right here. You can see I got the wiring all ran. All I gotta do is put the battery in and hook it up. Um, I got these little foam blocks that I'm gonna put the battery on and on the sides of it to pad it so the battery don't flop around. So I'm gonna show you what I got done and then I'm gonna show you how it looks at night. Also, earlier in the video I said I couldn't decide if I wanted to put a light on the front and the back or both on the front. Well, you can clearly see I went with both on the front, but I also ordered another light for the back. So that'll be a ne next thing I'll do to it. I probably won't show it in this video, but in future videos you'll see a light hanging off the back. Oh yeah, one last thing. Here's how it looks with the lid on. My favorite part of any electronics. This is so satisfying. If they had a job where you just peeled this plastic off electronics, I'd take it. Man, those are some bright freaking lights. Those are some bright freaking lights. Man, those brights are light as freak. As you can see, them lights work really well. All right, so when I put it together, it was just to see if everything worked. Um, I kind of just connected the light straight to the battery, which is not the ideal way to do it. So now I'm gonna actually do the wiring and I'll show you what I'm doing. I have this, which is a terminal block. I can connect multiple different things and run them to one power source, which would be the battery. I have this battery gauge, which is gonna give me the capacity and the voltage of the battery so I know if it's running dry, dry dead and you ain't got no front yard flex unless your yard cart has USB power supply and you can charge your phone from it. Oh yeah, that other light that I ordered for the back, it also showed up so I'll be putting that on too. Alright, you can see here that I just had the wires going from the toggle switch which is right here and then just went straight to the battery. You can also see that I have the foam blocks in there. I'm going to make use of the space where the foam blocks are and that's where I'm going to put the accessories that I want to add and then I'll probably put the terminal block somewhere back here. All right, I'm gonna show you what I got here. Pull open the lid. I got everything wired up. I added a fusible link just for safe measure, a seven and a half amp fuse. I think that should be plenty. Um, both of the terminal blocks are in, positives to one, 
all the negatives together, run through switch, and as you can see, everything comes on. And over here, I'm showing 11 and a half volts, or 40% battery, and if I plug my phone in, it charges. So down in here, I've added zip ties, just to have a handle to lift the battery in and out. I taped the zip ties to the bottom of the battery with Gorilla Tape, just so they stay in place as I lift the battery out. I can get it in and out. I have to take the foam block out first. I may rearrange some stuff, but it works fine for now. So something I was thinking about, let me know what you guys think. I'm thinking about lifting the wagon and putting bigger tires on it because that wagon sits kind of low and I'm pretty tall and I'm only carrying camera gear and having a taller wagon would be easier to access. Plus it would just look pretty damn cool. So think about this. I, I, I photoshopped a picture up here just to give you a rough idea. Um, say I take the rear wheels off of like a riding lawnmower and put them all the way around the wagon. If there's enough interest in that, I'll make a video lifting it. I've got a welder. We can make this happen. Let me know what you think. All right, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. So like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. And you didn't think I'd end the video without showing you this wagon in its native habitat, would you? All right, so I just parked the wagon in the woods. I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna see if you can find it. Oh God, up oh, there it is. Look at that, blends right in. So I've been pulling this thing for about an hour now and I don't even notice the extra weight. I mean, I carry varying amounts of water when I do carry it. And so I don't really see the extra weight from all the stuff I did to it, such as the battery that I'm carrying in the lights. I think it's gonna work out great. Look at that, you almost can't even see it. Yeah, so I come this far in the build, why stop here? This was a lot of fun to do. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it, I know I did. So I'm really thinking about doing that idea of lifting this thing up and putting it on some bigger wheels because it's still very easy to pull. I could pull it with two fingers if I wanted to. Of course, you could pull a thousand pounds if it was on wheels. That ain't no big deal. So give this video a bunch of likes or comments or something down below. Let me know this is something you wanna see and I'll make it happen. Welcome to my new home for the next five days. Look at that. Lights up the whole trail. Walking around at night here is the most amazing thing. Listen to that guy.